everyone, welcome back. I am here in my son's room. He is an avid reader and he has completely outgrown this. He doesn't even read these books anymore. What he reads are books like these and we are drowning in books. There are books everywhere and it is time I took care of that. So I'm gonna build him a bookshelf that is hopefully going to last for a while. So this is how I wrestle a sheet of plywood across my table saw. This bookshelf is made up almost entirely of plywood. It uses just over one sheet of plywood and as always I have the full step-by-step -step plans linked in the description below. It also includes an exact diagram on how you need to cut the plywood so you can get all the pieces that you need for this project. I wanted to round out the corners of the shelves, so I used a tape casing to draw the curves. And then I used a jigsaw to cut those out. I am using a top and bottom cut blade in my jigsaw, and I talk about this more in detail in my jigsaw video, so be sure to watch that. But essentially, this blade gives me a clean cut on the top as well as the bottom surface, so there is no tear out. I cut out one corner on all of the shelves as well as on all four corners of the top and the bottom panels. Now it's time for pocket holes. All of the shelves are going to get pocket holes on two edges. And these edges are the edges that are opposite the corner that we cut out with the jigsaw. We also need pocket holes on the edge of the dividers as well as on both the ends. So I turned my Craig 720 to its vertical position and made the pocket hole. So this is one of the features I really love about this pocket hole jig. At this point, before putting it all together, I also gave it a really quick sand on all of the corners just to take away any unevenness from the cuts that I had made. Now for the dowels. I needed a total of 48 pieces of dowels because there are three on every single shelf. So I set up a stop block on my miter saw and just went ahead and cut up all of the dowels. Okay, so I am ready to start attaching these dowels onto each of these shelves as book supports. Now, the deal with that is that each of these shelves is going to have an alternating direction for the dowels, right? For the book supports. It's gonna be this way, this way, this way, this way. But it's also going to alternate between each of the levels of the bookshelf. So ideally, I think I could just attach the dowels and then every level just rotate the entire thing. But just to be safe, I'm going to actually mark and label each and every level before I actually go ahead and start making holes for the dowels. Starting with the lowermost level, which is the full solid sheet of plywood. I used masking tape to label each level as well as mark exactly where the dowels were going to be. I measured and marked exactly where the dowels were going to be. They are half inch in from the edge and then they are spaced two inches apart. I used a force and a bit to make holes for the dowels. I have 5 8 inch dowels so I'm using a 5 8 inch force and a bit. I made sure that it didn't go all the way through and just sort of eyeballed it to make sure that the Forstner bit was below the surface of the board. The dowels sit in there pretty snug, so just a little bit of wood glue and tapping it in with a mallet makes them nice and tight once all the wood glue has dried. And then I just repeated it again and again and again on all the shelves. 
my little helper was around so he came in to help me as well as entertain me as I put in all of these dowels. Alright, so let's start assembling. The first thing we need to do is attach the divider onto the largest sheet of plywood. So I set that up and I made sure that everything was evenly spaced and square. I clamped a couple of squares on both the ends and then went ahead and applied wood glue and attached using pocket hole screws. Now to attach the shelves. All the shelves are spaced at about 13 inches, so I actually used a few scrap boards and cut them out at 13 inches, so I could use them as spacers, and that would help make the entire process a lot more repeatable and faster. And then I just attached them using pocket holes. And then I just repeated that again, and again, and again, and attached all the shelves on one side of the bookshelf. Next, it was time to attach on the other side of that divider. And attaching here, you wanna be really, really careful about not just the spacing, but essentially you wanna make sure that it is exactly aligned with the shelves that we had attached on the other side. And of course, this entire time, we have to keep track of the orientation of the shelves. And I am so thankful that I had decided to number and name them because that made this entire process so much easier. And I didn't have to think I could just pick up the right numbered shelf and attach it. All right, one side is done. So I went ahead and flipped the entire thing over and started the entire process all over again on the other side. Once again, over here, you want to be really careful with the alignment of the divider because it needs to be not only square and evenly spaced from the edges, you want it to be perfectly aligned with the divider that is on the bottom. And then I attached all the shelves. And then I attached the bottommost shelf, which is pretty straightforward. You just want to make sure everything is aligned on all sides and then attach it using pocket holes through the dividers. And finally, I attached the top, which is also all wood glue and pocket hole screws. I am going to be painting this bookshelf, so I went ahead and filled in all the visible pocket holes caulked all the seams and also filled in any voids on the edges of the plywood. If you want to know more about how to get the perfect finish on painted plywood, be sure to check out an article I have on my website and I will link to that in the description below. So the funny part is that this part where I'm putting the caulking and the wood filler is going to be probably the shortest part of the video but it has taken me almost double the time it took me to actually put this thing together. But that's just how it goes because the finishing is the most important step for the project to look good. If I don't spend time on it, all my hard work of actually putting it together is going to go down the drain. So we gotta do what we gotta do. Once it was ready, I got some help to pick it up and put it down because this thing has become pretty heavy. I gave it a couple coats of primer. And once that was dry, I gave it a very light sand and wiped off all the dust and gave it a few coats of paint. Now it's time for the Lazy Susan hardware. So I turned my bookshelf upside down and I laid out the base and drew two lines to find the center of the base. Then I aligned the Lazy Susan hardware on top of that and made sure it was centered and marked the exact location for the holes. There is also a larger hole that is made which needs to be all the way through and I made that using a Forstner bit. Then I went ahead and attached the Lazy Season hardware onto the base using 5 8 inch wood screws. I'm using hardware that is rated for 1000 pounds, so I think we will be okay. 
I placed the base onto the bookshelf, made sure it was aligned on all sides and then used that large hole to screw into the bookshelf. And the bookshelf was done. And since it's heavy, I just used the drop cloth I was using to pull it into my son's room. I finally took down the rain gutter bookshelves I had installed a couple of years ago. These are great for little kids and I have an entire video about how to put these up. Finally, I set up the bookshelf in his room and we had a lot of fun filling it up with books. And very interestingly, we barely filled up half of this bookshelf so there is so much more room to go in this bookshelf we decided it was also a great place to display his lego projects or toys once again i have the full step-by-step -step project plans linked in the description below i hope you enjoyed this project and if you aren't already please do hit that subscribe button so you get notified of my future videos and now here are some other projects that you might enjoy